This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. All right, today's topic is obviously controversial, very controversial, but I'm gonna do my best to navigate that in a particular way. What that means is that I need your help, you, the audience watching this right now, because the crux of the issue in play at the moment is general behavior. Right now, that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but remember this, and towards the end of the video, I'll circle back to it with hopefully a much clearer articulation of what it is people can actually do to help. So with all that said, let's begin. Right now, as I make this, a company called Sweet Baby Incorporated is dominating the gaming news cycle. It's the subject of, I don't even know how many different articles now, decrying the gaming community is toxic, claiming that players are ill-informed, or any number of criticisms levied at the general industry player base for daring to criticize this company in any way, shape, or form. That sounds kind of ridiculous on its face, I know, but that's kind of where we are. To properly dive into this topic, though, we have to go back in time. August of 2014, about 10 years ago, there was an event. That event, now known as Gamergate to most, became a subject mired in controversy, rife with disinformation, and scrutinized by an audience far beyond the typical video game community after it basically went mainstream. Here's what I mean by that. Just a few days ago, The Guardian published a piece about how it's been 10 years since Gamergate, but conspiracy theorists are still routinely targeting and abusing women and woke game consultants. That's a preposterous way to frame it, in my view, but that's the position we're in. Gamergate has become a pop culture term with widespread implications, and in case you don't believe me, here's an example from CNET. Gamergate to Trump, how video game culture blew everything up. Funnily enough, in the title, I don't know what to call it here, the blurb maybe, of the article on Google, the title is actually Gamergate to American Nazis, How Video Game Culture Blew Everything Up, which also demonstrates the level of rhetoric in play here. Side note, this article was written by Ian Schur, the same writer who published a hit piece about me at one point in time, so yeah, there's a personal angle here as well, owing to how certain media voices have deliberately and vindictively attacked the video game community frequently over the past several years. Gamergate has become an all-encompassing avatar of everything bad online for a lot of people, but the word itself really doesn't have a monolithic definition. The truth is, Gamergate means different things to different people, and you'll get different answers depending on who you ask. It's a topic that could honestly span several hours, but I'll try to boil it down as much as possible. On one side, Gamergate is described as a hateful campaign of harassment that was carried out by online video game players, particularly against women and various media figureheads, for daring to exist simply in the space. It branches out from there. Some people openly claim that Gamergate is the reason for American political shifts or mark it as the genesis point of conspiracy and misinformation on a global scale. But the short form summary is that for one of these groups involved, Gamergate is an avatar of evil supported by horrible, dangerous, and totally unhinged people. On the other side, that very same concept is about ethics. Depending on who you ask, Gamergate is either the progenitor of online hate and harassment or a simple movement demanding higher ethical standards in journalism. And the reasons for that are actually pretty simple. Early on, as Gamergate got started at least, the bulk of criticism revolved around conflicts of interest. Journalists giving favors to particular developers, nepotism, or other impropriety in gaming media. Asking one side what the term means will have them basically hiss at you but asking the other will get varied responses, all hinging on the idea that when you are a journalist, you should be properly disclosing conflicts of interest and seeking to write accurate, truthful articles instead of coordinating to push a desired narrative. I don't know how much of this will resonate with most people, but the FBI, thanks to a FOIA request, which means Freedom of Information Act, published a redacted version of their entire investigation into Gamergate, and it's pretty clear what their findings were. What initially started as a movement demanding better ethics in journalism was eventually bogged down by, for lack of a better term here, internet trolls. As someone who encounters internet trolling on a regular basis every day and grew up with it, it, the general concept at least since I was a child, I see it as little more than a basic annoyance, which it seems the FBI holistically agreed with. But as trolls and other bad actors began to integrate themselves within the general Gamergate movement, it became easier and easier for media publications and figureheads to decry everyone involved as toxic, prejudiced, and hateful. Flash forward, after a persistent atmosphere of loudly proclaimed victimhood was perpetuated for a very long time, and we can see what amounts to a general narrative fully installed in the wider population, 
which paints Gamergate as a misogynistic campaign of anger driven by the worst kinds of people imaginable because their one and only desire is to harass others, particularly women and marginalized communities. That is effectively what Gamergate is. It's a two-sided coin where one portion of those involved view it to be a struggle against mainstream media and journalistic corruption, and the other portion view it to be a horrifying avatar of everything wrong on the entire internet. All right, time to pay the bills by endorsing a product I actually use myself and promote in my free time because of its relative quality, which is Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network. Most of you have probably heard the term before. And VPNs protect you from a bunch of different things. Of course, nothing in cybersecurity is ever 100% perfect. Keep that in mind. But Surfshark protects against certain types of phishing attacks, malware, DNS tunneling, DDoS attacks in particular, and also against the new and painfully normalized practice of invasive big tech data harvesting as well as tracking. It doesn't stop there either. Surfshark unlocks additional content on streaming websites, such as Netflix, for example. You can easily change your region and add additional options in your video library as a result of geo-gated licensing agreements. Here's a big one. Surfshark gets around regional censorship, like the government deciding to block things. And Surfshark also offers encryption, IP protection, modification, and more. I say this in every single segment about them now, because it's important. For those that know why, good on you. Surfshark operates completely separate infrastructure from NordVPN, and Surfshark also maintains a warrant canary. I never use or endorse a VPN that doesn't and never will. If you click the link down below using promo code Echelon, you can take advantage of a special community-wide offer with up to three months for free. Again, that's promo code Echelon with the link down below for a community-wide special offer, three months for free. Big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring the channel. So why does it matter? Well, it matters because we might actually be cruising straight for round two of that same struggle as a widespread media narrative emerges surrounding Sweet Baby Incorporated and the toxic trolls who are allegedly harassing them. Again, just a few days ago, The Guardian published a piece directly connecting Gamergate and Sweet Baby, saying, quote, A group with more than 200,000 followers on PC game storefront Steam, as well as thousands in a Discord chat channel, believes that Sweet Baby Inc. is secretly forcing game developers to change the bodies, ethnicities, and sexualities of video game characters to conform to woke ideology. They think that Sweet Baby has written and controlled almost every popular video game of the past five years, shutting straight white men out. End quote. That's a ridiculous thing to write. Obviously, people aren't making the argument that they've controlled basically every popular video game of the past five years. I mean, I mean, talk about straw man, okay? This is off script right now. I mean, the level of straw man argumentation in this whole thing right now is absurd, but whatever, that's a whole separate topic. There's no end to the media response, but here's a snapshot, generally speaking. From Kotaku. Sweet Baby Inc. doesn't do what some gamers think it does. From PC Gamer. A company called Sweet Baby Inc. has become the target of anti-woke gamers because it offers consultancy work and industry standard service that's been normal for years. From Eurogamer. Spider-Man, Alan Wake, Ridiculous Fishing Devs speak up in support of consultancy studio Sweet Baby Inc. after online group claims firm pushing agenda into games it worked on. Or game developer. This one's a very, very obvious example. Why are Valve and Discord permitting harassment against Sweet Baby Incorporated? Steam and Discord are being used as a home base for hateful reactionaries to single out and harass game developers, end quote. And the list goes on and on. That's already very clear in terms of tactics involved, but going even further, here's a post from Take This, which is a nonprofit 501c3 mental health organization that has worked with prominent games industry companies like Bethesda, Ubisoft, or Riot Games. Take This decided to publish a blog post quite literally denouncing Gamergate 2, as they call it, which reads, quote, If you're reading this, you've probably been hearing about what's now being called Gamergate 2. It's the latest targeted harassment campaign within the game industry, and it's aimed at Sweet Baby Incorporated, a Montreal-based narrative development studio. The, the campaign also has been impacting entities and games associated with Sweet Baby, journalists covering the issue, woe is me, and others associated in various ways with the targets. You also may be at a loss to know how to talk about this issue and what, if anything, you can do about it. That's where we come in, end quote. Now, what's interesting here is that as per most of their existing work disclosed on a variety of pages, such as this one about strategies for addressing hate, harassment, and extremism in online communities, Take This is funded by the Department of Homeland Security. 
This means in no uncertain terms that United States tax dollars are now being used as part of a media campaign that very articulately labels Sweet Baby Incorporated as the victim of a harassment campaign, which is a lockstep replica of precisely what happened in 2014. The similarities here are striking. Alyssa Mercante, the Kotaku writer responsible for the most recent article defending Sweet Baby Incorporated and claiming the gamers don't understand what it does, is now openly threatening industry leaders, with massive followings in particular, for not speaking out, which can be more accurately translated here as not echoing what I'm saying right now and helping push the desired narrative. However, as all of this unfolds, there is one thing that remains paramount to understand, and that is origin. This entire issue is predicated on a Steam list. Using what are essentially very basic platform tools, a user on Steam decided to make a list of games that a narrative consultation company, that being Sweet Baby Incorporated, had worked on previously for the purpose of then avoiding those titles, not buying them. That's it. After doing so, an action that cannot be labeled as harassment in any conceivable sense of the word ever, a couple of Sweet Baby employees, former and current, decided to try and get the list taken down, but in addition to that, they tried to get the creator suspended permanently from the platform just because they didn't like him. When they did this at the time, the list had between five and 9,000 followers, but after they attempted to vindictively cancel and personally harm someone who simply made a list of their games that the company worked on, that's all he did. After that happened, the number of followers and people aware of them skyrocketed. Sweet Baby Incorporated was not harassed. It categorically did not happen. What happened was that people don't like their shitty work and don't want to play the games that they help with. In response, they harassed someone. They attempted to attack him, and that is what sparked widespread recognition of this topic and seems to be kicking off Gamergate 2. Now, with that said, I need to clarify a few things. It's entirely possible that they are now receiving harassment from a wider set of people who are sick and tired of people like them attempting to get those that they disagree with deleted from the internet. But the media cycle we are witnessing is a lie. It's built on things that are not true. It attempts to label everything critical of them as hateful harassment. And it's almost identical to what happened 10 years ago with Gamergate. Make no mistake here, gamers were skeptical and critical of Sweet Baby Incorporated before all this, myself included as well. As a result, someone made a list of the games that they work on from their own website that was the source for getting this list, so that people could simply not buy those games if they didn't want to. And then Sweet Baby employees tried to rally a harassment campaign against the creator and get his personal accounts deleted forever. That effort failed spectacularly. They streisanded themselves horribly bad. Over a quarter million people now follow that list because they don't want to support that company as a result of that company's own actions. And the media is running a widespread defensive campaign for them about how Sweet Baby Incorporated are being harassed and how Gamergate 2 is such a huge problem. I can't say what the narrative will look like in six months or a year from now. It may end up in a completely identical situation as the original Gamergate issue, where a small number of people's behavior is then used to relegate the entire subject to a shadow realm of, these horrible people are the reason for everything bad in the world, ah, they got Trump elected, and ah, everything's falling apart because of them. But right now, we're in the beginning stages, where the media is trying to do something like that, but hasn't fully solidified their message yet, and currently lacks the proper justification for a blanket condemnation of everyone involved, even though they're desperately looking for it. This is the part where I circle back all the way to the start. Don't give them a reason. I need your help, and this centers on general behavior, you, the audience, I need your help, because anyone who now says something critical of Sweet Baby in the wrong tone, or with the wrong words, or uses any sort of tactic beyond simple, articulate, and respectful criticism, will be giving ammunition to a group of people that is determined to paint everyone they can as extremist and vile. If you troll, if you vent your frustrations in an improper way, any improper way at all, or on an improper forum, you will be giving them an out, an out that they desperately need, by the way, to reclassify all of this as a hateful campaign of evil gamers who are ist and phobic and whatever else they can conjure up. Because make no mistake here, that is where we're headed. Do not forget where all of this started. Do not forget that proper behavior is utterly and completely disarming for them. And choose where to spend your money accordingly. If large companies want to speak on the issue now and gaslight their own audience with the media or in tandem lockstep with the media, 
as they're attempting to do here, don't buy from them. If journalists want to pretend that the mere existence of a list of games is harassing, don't read their work. And please, again, do not contribute to any activity whatsoever that can be used by a desperate and mentally deficient cohort of media figureheads to paint everyone else around you as hateful or unstable. Be better than them. Because you are better than them. Because everyone is better than them. That's it. If you want to support, please check out the links down below. We have a limited run merchandise line expiring soon, so grab that while you can. Don't miss it. The video sponsor, of course, Surfshark. Big thank you to them. Locals and Patreon for monthly subscriptions. Those are excellent platforms to support, etc., etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.